Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Cocktail Hour. We're happy to be here. I'm Andy. I'm Sherry. Hello. I'm Colette. Woohoo! See, the gang's all here, y'all. So, what are we drinking? What are we drinking? Come on. <laughs> I'll give uh, anybody a guess. <laughs> I'm having Diet Mountain Dew. Diet Mountain Dew. Sherry, I, got, hmm? I have Water. to drive to get sushi later, and I... Oh. Don't want to be incapacitated. Makes perfect sense. Sherry, Until yeah. I get home. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> then then everything awesome. changes. There you go. Awesome. <clears throat> Sherry, is your water flavored? Uh, it's, uh, I'm enjoying grapefruit right now. Grapefruit water. I feel like that should be like um, one of those old code phrases that spies would use. Because <laughs> no one in in the world would ever naturally say i am enjoying grapefruit because it's just fucking gross it yeah. is not it's delicious it's good when you lots of sugar on it it's also good at grapefruit grapefruit juice is very good with vodka okay yeah and a little um isn't that uh, a salty dog cranberries, um like cram grape juice or cranberry juice and that is no i think that that's not true no i think it's a sea breeze isn't it a sea breeze right. is, is cranberry and vodka. Yeah, a sea breeze. Yes. Yeah. Yes, no one of my used to drink those like they were water. Mm. Grapefruit-flavored water? <laughs> I'm just having a lovely table red. Nothing to scream about. But I have to pace myself because i got to run over to Whole Foods after this show. So I'm only having a little sip here and there. I want to be safe and have others safe. That's really <laughs> cool. I well know. Done. Well done. Yes. All right, then. So we are going to chat about... Oh, we don't have any housekeeping issues, do we? I don't think so. Okay. All right. <laughs> so... Well, we never have them anymore, but, you know, the, the time I don't ask is when you go, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Hold on. See? Okay, That's so cool. we did have a comment um, on... I think this one was on the website about um, because we're not doing live shows right now yeah. because I just our Wi-Fi is so bad and we haven't run a, a um, Ethernet, Ethernet, whatever uh, mm -hmm. cable to hook up to anything. Um, so um, we're not doing live shows because it just isn't going to work. We'll, we'll um, get so here again eventually, y'all. Probably, right. maybe, possibly. <laughs> so the comment, um, Tammy had left a comment um, that the non-live shows are fine with her, uh, except maybe when we have an author guest, because you don't count anymore. Right. Well, yeah. 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 I mean, you haven't, you haven't put out a book in a long time. You don't really count as an and, author guest anymore. And notice we haven't teased you about it like we used to. I know. That, that was the first time we brought it up. This is, what is this again? This is not teasing? Okay. I guess <laughs> this is the first time. I guess this many, is just a, an intervention is what it is, right? Oh, oh it, my it is. It's an intervention. Right. Are you working on anything? Are you still are you working on that pirate or not the pirate, the cowboy one that Andy and I requested? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the problem is, um, you know, research. Because if you if you pick a period of time that is extremely popular, like everybody in the world is like, you know, like you spelled that Civil War general's name wrong, <laughs> and, you know, like everybody seems to know everything about that time period. So you got to make sure that it's correct. Is that what you're doing? Are you doing Civil War? <laughs> oh, you already nodded. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that is the same era as the West, yeah. so. All just right. well, kind of depends on where you are on the map. I mean, Andy and I are here for you to help. We are. With anything that you might need. I think, Andy, aren't you? Um, I was getting into the Civil War in that era and, and stuff. So, I mean, I'd be happy to. I mean, if you're looking for people to read stuff or bounce yeah. ideas off of, you know we're here for you. And, you know, Sherry's going to be here in about a week and a half. We could always get in Anderson and drive up and bring you some material. Just saying. <laughs> How far, how long of a drive is that? Really, um, like, 
I'm I would 14 guess, hours, maybe? Yeah, I would guess about Okay, 10. I'm not flying across the country to then get in the <laughs> truck and then right? drive. But it yeah, would be no. a road trip with us. It'd be awesome. <clears throat> no, we're not driving up there. <laughs> but um, another trip. We plan another trip. Yes. But, dude, bring shorts because it's hot as Satan's underwear up in here. Not in your house, it is, and I don't really plan to leave. But if it's not (laughs) raining, we're going to be outside in all that muggy shit. So, all right, we'll see. And you know, keep your eyes out for the flying roaches. Oh yes, yeah, Uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah. (laughs) Hey, I got an idea. Colette can come down. Hmm. And we can. I like that so much better. That is so much better. Put That's Roman so Slayer in the vehicle and come on down. Bring Jake. And Jake, bring Jake. Mm. <laughs> she sounds so good. Well, there's so many bugs in Florida, and he is so. Like Jake would be afraid of the. He is so bug phobic, man. Like he can't. He can't handle a gnat without freaking out and leaving the room. I cannot imagine. <laughs> The like prehistoric Bronto bugs that live in Florida. Oh come on, um, man! They're not that bad. Jesus. Oh no, they are. What? What? I mean, when I first learned that the roaches down there fly, the um, like I went, I was on vacation. I had just checked in, and I went to smush a bug with my shoe, <laughs> and it flew at my face, and I almost pissed my pants, man. Like I was not prepared. Those no. Are- Nobody had pulled me aside and given me, like, the quick rundown on all the shit in Florida that is going to try and kill you. Those are palmetto bugs. They are. And so when I went down to the front desk and I was like, hey, I don't think, I think you're going to have to move me from the ground floor because some (laughs) giant roachy shit just flew at my face. And they were like, Oh ma'am, it is only gonna get worse the higher you go. They live in the palm trees and they drop down. And I was like, What? They do, they die bomb out of palm trees. Yep. Yeah. But not so, all palm so. trees, the palm trees at my house are sprayed. They don't they don't come into my palm trees. I'm yeah, just, so that was yeah, terrifying. I'm not and then your house. when we went to take the little uh airboat ride on in in the Everglades, which is beautiful. It is. Um, like, I'm already sort of prepared that I'm Macy Gators, right? <laughs> Which is another thing there that's trying to kill me. And um, <clears throat> I had like, I don't know, I guess there's maybe 15, 20 minutes before the boat left. So we were like, well, let's look around. And so we wander <laughs> off and a guy stops us and is like, oh, don't go back there. Because the mosquitoes will eat you alive. And I just thought he was, that's what you say about mosquitoes. But holy shit, y'all, big as your fist. And they swarm, like could carry small children or pets away. Like incredible mosquitoes. We were back there for under a minute. We fucking ran out of there. Because they were trying to kill us. Will you please, will you please stop whatever book you're working on and write a contemporary romance <laughs> that uh, that deals with with a couple uh, on a, on a trek through the or just on a Florida vacation <laughs> because that would be fantastic. Can you please be quiet and go away, please? I have mosquito spray. It's all good. All right. Then. I'll even, drive, I'll even drive you to the best Cuban joint in Miami for food. Is it like Florida right. strength mosquito spray? Because I kind of feel like, you know what I mean? It's I'm like good. a little bit like, like Jurassic Park with bugs. <laughs> I am still alive. <laughs> and my birthday is this coming Tuesday. So trust me when I tell you, I expect to live a few more de- few more decades. Maybe you're right. just immune now. Oh, right. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> right. You have built up like Florida immunity. <laughs> they recognize her as a native, and they're like, "Nah." Yeah. You're already tainted. I'm going to move on to t- to tourist <laughs> blood. Can you? Please oh my stop? God, you guys are bad. Bad. Hmm. All right, so we don't have anything else. So, but uh, welcome, welcome <laughs> to the 
Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the insanity. <laughs> See how you get that little insider scoop and view of how we navigate when we're not recording? This is actually kind of light in comparison. Um, yeah, we have a lot of fun. That We do have a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, we are <clears throat> well, we're going to discuss a book we read. Uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I'm sorry. Who read? <laughs> the book who read? Oh, shit. That I Colette and I read? Uh -huh. I have a story for you guys. I have a story for you guys. And it's not... <laughs> And I did like what I read. Okay. So hold on. It, let me just give a little disclaimer. She doesn't come out looking good <laughs> in this story. Okay. All, right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's one one flew over the cookie's nest. And it was written by author Ken Kessie. I think it's Kessie. Uh, and it, I think it's I thought Kesey. It was Kesey. It yeah. Was, it's Kesey. We'll call it Kesey. Um, it was originally published by Berkeley Press and it came out in 1963. And the author died in 2001. So I was going to wow. ask, like, did he do other stuff? He did. He did. Yes. Did you read any of it? Was it yeah. any good? Did not. <laughs> it's, I mean, is it anything that I would have heard of? Because, no. I mean, obviously, this is a, this is a pretty famous book. And this, it was it, turned into an even more famous film. Yes. This was his famous work. Okay. I mean, I wasn't sure if he was, you know, going to be another Harper Lee, where he had one book in him, and then that was that was it. I think this was his most famous work. Um, I don't recall what the others were. Let me see. Well, and quick. I think that he actually worked in a mental health institution. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did it. I've never heard of the other titles. Some of them are uh, Sometimes and Great Notion, Last Go Round, Sailor's Song, Demon Box. Of course, that sounds like one of my exes, but. I was going to say that that's Andy's nickname. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I never heard any of those. Hmm. Now, I wonder, and maybe uh, one of you knows this, was the book super famous? Was the book really, really popular um, so, before the film? The, yes. The book okay. was a big, a big deal, okay. and I believe it was turned into a Broadway play that was then optioned. I think um, Kirk Douglas starred in the Broadway play and was oh, on wow. Broadway for quite some time. And I think he optioned the rights to turn it into a film in the 60s, but it yeah. didn't happen. And I think his son, Michael Douglas, is the one who ended up producing the film that would ultimately oh, star you know Jack what? Nicholson. I yeah, because when we were watching the, we watched the, the film last week and, um, and I remember Michael. seeing Michael, yeah, or actually TJ noticed it, that it said Michael Douglas. So that's really interesting. That's oh. very interesting. Okay. All right, then. So, um, Andy, do you want to do like a summary of, I'm only saying that because I have a feeling you have it pulled up. I, 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 I yes, I did. Hold on a minute. Oh, I, okay. I, I, it's okay. I had it up and we were yakking and i closed it just as you said that which is awesome. okay so here is the summary uh through amazon thank you amazon now give your employees health insurance um that, here we go. That, we're setting the bar a little low now aren't we uh, <laughs> thanks for not letting your people die Oh, yeah, that too. Well, they, they do. Uh, they die on the floor of the warehouse, and then everybody else has to go back to work. Get because back they, to work. Yeah, because they'll, like, eat lunch on the go, eat dinner on the go. Oh, my God. Okay. In this classic novel, Ken K What are we Kesey. calling him? Kesey? Okay. Kesey. In, all right. In this classic novel, Ken Kesey's hero is Randall Patrick McMurphy, a boisterous, brawling, fun-loving rebel who swaggers into the world of a mental hospital and takes over. A lusty, life-affirming fighter, McMurphy rallies the other patients around him by challenging the dictatorship of Nurse Ratched. He promotes gambling in the ward, smuggles in wine and women, and openly defies the rules at every turn. But this defiance, which starts as a sport, soon develops into a grim struggle, an all-out war between two relentless opponents, Nurse Ratched, 
backed by the full power of authority and McMurphy, who has only his own indomitable will. What happens when Nurse Ratchet uses her ultimate weapon against McMurphy provides the story's shocking climax. And there you have it. And there we go. That's pretty good. Uh, pretty good description. And I know that this has been around, like you said, for decades. I mean, the book <laughs> yeah. is, you know, is older than I am, which we don't read a lot of books that are older than me. So, um, oh my God, the, you're old when this book came out. I know, but you're a lot older than I am. I'm just a baby, <laughs> just a gray-haired baby. Thanks. That's, I that's, think that's it. Well, we we did. Um, what was the Truman Capote? We did in Cold Blood. Yeah. Was that older than me, too? I was born in 68. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't the murders happen in the early 60s? In the early 60s, yeah. Oh, we did The Thin Man. That was back Oh, in The Thin 30s. Man. Oh, which was super duper old. Like That's older 1930s. than 1930s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Andy. Yeah, so... um. So, and, and for folks who have uh, watched the film, which I assume are loads of people, have you, Andy, you've, you, you said you did see it, but it was decades a, a ago. long time ago. Decades ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but it, I thought that I had seen it, but after watching it, I think I only knew about it because oh, really? none of it looked familiar to me. Yeah. Oh. Well, they, they, I, they retool the movie, though, a little bit outside the book, which I'm sure will come up when we talk about it. Um, but it, it, even though it got retooled, it was still a significant piece of work. And I think it won the best film, didn't it, for that year? I think it was like there were like nine Oscars or something. Yeah. That it, yeah. That it took. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was what I was going to say, especially um, there were there were quite a few differences uh, in the early like in the first half. <laughs> In like, the first like two thirds of the book, but once, um, but once they got done with the boat ride, um, yeah. it really stuck very closely to the film, or the the film t stuck very very closely to the, and even the boat ride to some degree. Um, but anyway, so the the book. Uh, Probably the the big difference, and, and they wouldn't have been able to do this, I don't think, in the film. The film um, really focuses on um, on Jack Nicholson's character McMurphy, uh, the the lead dude. But in the book, uh, everything is from uh, the chiefs, the the big Native American dude. It's all from his perspective, which I yeah. thought was so awesome. It that was completely so great. surprised me when I started reading it. I was like, wait a second, <laughs> because I had seen the movie. I don't know, twenty years ago or something on HBO or whatever. Um, so yeah, that floored me. Like that was a significant difference, and I'm sure they had to make that change when they adapted it for the stage. Right, because Robson, he doesn't speak. Robson is pretending to be deaf, deaf and, mute. and mute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he is not going to be an excellent narrator for your story. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Unless yeah. they did some kind of voiceover, like you, you know, like the audience heard it, but you didn't know where it was coming from. Narration. Uh -huh. I don't know what they call it narration. I'm glad that they did it the way that they did in the film. Yeah. Um, it was because you were really follow. able to to follow uh, McMurphy's yeah. character uh, more and get more into um, some of the some of the other characters a little bit. Although, um, like in the in the book, you really get to kind of know some some of the some of the other um, in, uh, some of the other patients, uh, like the guy with his wife and the issues that that he's got with his wife and um, and Billy and. Um, I still think that the I think the movie did a, did a great job, um, but just like with any other book that's that's adapted, you get so much more, um, so much more feeling yeah. and emotion. I mean, I I still cried uh, while watching the film, but um, yeah, it was I I liked it a lot. Um, the Wait, the what thing did I cry at. I'm I'm curious. Um. I think just the, the 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 I think that the the actor who played the chief, mm -hmm. 
his emotions when it came to uh, to seeing McMurphy uh, lobotomized and um, seeing seeing this what is this incredibly strong personality uh, who fought to the very end to maintain his, like it says in, in, at the end of the book that, um, you know, he, he had, he fought for them and tried to, to stay strong for all of them, even after he had lost all of his humor. Like I, there was a part in the beginning of the book where McMurphy is talking about once you lose your humor, you're done. If you can't, if you can't maintain your your humor and and be able to laugh at life situations, then they've got you. You know, when he first got onto the ward and he was talking about how beaten down all the rest of the the patients were, how they just all shuffled about and did their own thing, and he comes up onto the ward and he's like. Hey motherfuckers, what's going on? Let's shake this shit up. Who's the who's the head? What did he call him? The head loony? The head head yeah. loony goose or something like that? Yeah, something like that, yeah. And he, you know, I think, um, and the chief had been alone for so long. I mean, mentally alone. And one of the things I wanted to talk about is how well how how well. Um, uh, the the uh, the author was able to show the chief's own psychosis um, because you really don't get you really don't get that in the movie like the chief's got a whole other thing going on he's got some paranoia and he's got almost like didn't he have like some kind of like hallucinatory had some hallucinatory, hallucinatory uh, things going on where he would see different things and um, and we got to see bits of his childhood and his family and and how all of that um, kind of contributed. But in the in the movie, you just see this this quiet dude who's just kind of a loner, but he's got so much going on. Yeah. And I think McMurphy just he brought so much out in in the, in that character. Do you, know? you re- do you remember who played the? Um... I don't remember his name, but I, I thought he did such a fantastic job. I'm pulling it up now. I don't think I had ever heard of him before. So Colette, what did you what did you think about the the chief's character and and all of that? Oh yeah, Will Sampson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was his name something Sampson? Will, what Will what? Sampson? Yeah. What else did he do? Uh, let me see. Filmography. What else? Pol- Poltergeist 2. Oh. Oh. That's a real well, I'm step sorry. down. <laughs> He's been in a bunch of stuff. I mean, just, you know, like take you throwing a dart, the outlaw Josie Wales. Oh, okay. Um, so he was kind so of a go-to the go-to Native guy. American guy. Yep, yep, yep. From, yep. Okay. They go to. He's done TV. He's done movies. Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. The White Buffalo with Charles Bronson. <clears throat> I mean, um, for me, that character is one of the few characters that I liked. I don't know if that was his role, but um, this book kind of made me mad more than I expected it to. These there was a guys, lot to be mad there about. There's just so much misogyny in this book, and I yeah. didn't even get the sense that it was intentional. Like, it was no. just, this is how it is. Um, there were no women that weren't awful. Um, I mean, so there's the prostitute, and then, you know, the one that they just hire to come in and service them, and then there's Nurse Ratchet, who... Yeah, she's the ball, the ball cutter. Right. right, but I mean, but I think if you look at if you look at the setting, right? It's an all male. They're in an all male area, so they're not going to be any other females around. It's not totally. and, it's fine, and, but every and, and, every time they talked about, you know, mothers and wives. Yeah, and what, I get where you're going. Every character in this book had some hang up. 
about being emasculated in some way. Mm-hmm. And it just kept coming up. No pun intended. Oh! But I mean, that, you know, Brompton was kind of the only dude who didn't seem to have crazy issues with the existence of women in general. <clears throat> right? So it made it really hard for me to care about McMurphy um, because he's such a sexist piece of shit. I don't think I don't know that we were really supposed to care about McMurphy. Really? I mean, I didn't I didn't really care about him. Um, to me, I as, mean, yeah. he's very much the Christ figure in this book. Mm-hmm. To, I, mean, I think, to, yeah, I, pretty heavy handed in how that, you know, that kept coming up. And then, of course, in the end, he is, um, you know, sacrificed. Right. He's put on a table of like, all the other inmates right right? yeah 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 i think for for me i mean i didn't i didn't care about him as as a as a human as a character i cared about him and you know and how he connected with the and, and how the chief saw him for me he was only a catalyst to um to me experiencing the the chief but for me, the whole story was really about about the chief. I mean, I didn't really care about McMurphy, and and maybe I, I'm maybe I'm like the odd odd woman out well, on but, that. But then when they when they convert this to, you know, a stage play and a film, yeah. and it's no longer from his POV, it's right. all about McMurphy. Yes. So. Yeah. But I I think what ultimately McMurphy does for this story. Is that he tries to 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 he tries to show that don't give up, right? That yeah. Don't give up. Don't don't yeah, just be a mindless the, drone. Don't even, be a zombie. Find find the, life and still live it. Even the don't give up is prefaced around don't let them cut your balls. Don't let this bitch keep you down and keep you in your place and they talk about even um the gay guy who's clearly gay and yet married (laughs) um it talks about you know you have to get women to submit to you using the only Mm -hmm. tool that men have their penis and um there's just like the whole thing just um made me angry yeah yeah Yeah. I, I, I mean, do you think that some of that might have to do with those men coming up in the 40s and 50s? Oh, I'm sure. You know, and, and I would be interested to know people who read this book when it came out. You know, if that was just one of those things that um, that's I mean, how things were. I mean, the um, same as is, is, is using, you know, constantly dropping, you know, uh, coon and the yep. n-word and stuff like yep. that those things aren't you just i think i think taking it in context of of the age that that it was that right. it was i mean i'm and, not excusing it of course but well, from the, um the orderlies right they uh the, they are referred the, to throughout as the black the, boys as the black boys even though okay. i mean they're all men and that's incredibly demeaning Yep. Um, you know, and that's from the likable character, right? yeah, right? from Brompton's POV. Who knows what uh, what they would have been called if McMurphy or somebody else had been narrating instead? Oh, but, oh right, right, God. yeah. So, I mean, the only women that, besides the prostitutes, um, are the, the are the nurses. Right. Oh, right, but but she's. I mean, the only time she she comes up a few times in therapy. Um, but, um, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know that there was, there weren't any positive women. Uh, I mean, the, well, the, the, the whores were, were fine. They were positive, but there was no, there was no, they weren't, the women were I don't know that they would be treated any differently today by, by general population as being sex workers. the country you're in too. You know, I mean, women in this story are objects, regardless right. of what end of the spectrum you're on. 
And that and, would be and probably I, true today, depending on what part of the U.S. Yeah. or world you are. And I think Miss Nurse Ratched, in addition to being a hateful, controlling, um, miserable Character. person, I think she also symbolized the entire system. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, and and yes, you're absolutely right. The misogyny and racism um, is huge. Mm -hmm. um, and McMurphy is kind of a, he's a douchebag. I mean, he's very selfish, even though um, by, by the, by the end, yeah, at least the chief thinks that he's, you know, that he's sacrificing for them. Um, but he is incredibly selfish. And I think they lay that out very clearly in that, you know, mm -hmm. he, it's all about what he wants to do. He's, he, he, even, and even the chief felt bad for having uh, the bet about lifting up that big control panel. He's like, I don't want to have anything to do with this. I don't want, I don't want to benefit from this because you are an asshole and taking yeah. their money for that. I mean, he's kind of the only character that is not severely flawed to the point where, you know, I don't care what happens to any of the other people in here, right? I mean, the orderlies are there because Nurse Ratched made sure that she picked sort of sociopaths who are not going to have any problems um, mm -hmm. victimizing I, these, yeah, these people. Yeah, I loved how they described that, how it took years mm -hmm. for her to, to gradually get one dude and then, you know, weed out the ones that wouldn't do her bidding without questioning. These guys were sadistic bastards, essentially, yep. and she that's why yep. she hired them. Yep. Patiently methodical. Right. Yeah. In, the, in the same way, she gets a doctor there who, you know, the, the assumption would be that the doctor would call the shots. Uh -uh. Um, but it was but, really her. Yeah. Really her. Yeah. She brings in a milk toasty guy who will just basically do whatever she wants him to do. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I get why this was um, a popular book and a popular film, but um... the the way the the way that the author wrote this, in many ways, it's like it's like kind of like watching a train wreck, you know? It, yeah, like, yeah. It makes it engaging with how he crafts his words, even if the characters or the subject matter is a little distasteful but he's able to to <clears throat> he's able to to weave this story so that you're like okay I, you know it's but yes you take a lot out of it or a lot away from it you know with the type of characters that he wrote but i mean he was he was really good with his words there's no doubt on how he crafted that story no doubt i i did i very much like the language i mean outside of the the horribly racist shit. But again, I mean, and that's something that I've really noticed with reading old Stephen King, like I've, I'm rereading The Stand, mm -hmm. and just how incredibly racist and and homophobic some of the language is um, in, in old King books. And I was wondering if, if he's ever addressed that, um, I don't know. Uh, or, or if people talk about it, I know we've talked about it when we when we did the, when shining. We did the shining, yeah. And and the also stand is the same with Jack oh, Also, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wait, didn't yeah. one of you didn't one of you just do a Joe Hill thing? I didn't go. I was tired and didn't oh. feel good. Okay. We were supposed to go see Joe Hill, um, but I didn't care enough to drag my ass out of the house. I looked at TJ. I'm like, I really don't feel like going. And she goes, Oh, good. I don't either. <laughs> Awesome. I know you sent me that 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 text or whatever, and I'm like, damn, that would be awesomely fun. Yeah, it, it would have been, but I was tired and I didn't want to go. That's what I was saying earlier. It really has to be somebody that I want to go see. Yeah. And like we went to go see um Billy Jensen, who wrote um um he wrote uh he's a true crime uh 
author and he also does podcasts and he actually solves crimes cold cases which is really cool so we went to go see him and i got the book and signed it and everybody was doing selfies and i was like he stood up to do a selfie with me i'm like no (laughs) you don't have to do that i don't i don't that's fine i really enjoyed your talk i'm gonna go now (laughs) that's awesome yeah but um would you guys recommend this book to others I would. I enjoyed it. I thought the I thought the the um I thought the writing style itself, the the language that he used, um I I really enjoyed um I really enjoyed getting into uh the chief's head. I really like that a lot. Um also I thought um for the audiobook, I thought John C. Riley did a fantastic job, like super her, he I, was very um, good. I mean, there's yeah. real value in getting actors to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like, you know, yeah, he's, he just he's, brought so many of those guys to life. It was yeah. very good. He's exceptional. He's good in everything that I've seen him do. So. Yeah, I know why. He did a good job in this, too. Yeah. yeah. So, did. Colette, you would not recommend it? I don't think so. I mean, yeah, it... It was interesting versus the film because you do get to know Brompton's character. And I I thought it was really interesting. Um, the fog, right? His mental fog that he sees yeah. as fog. And, um, you know, it, it, it was, uh, for me, the most interesting part was sort of watching his evolution from this sort of broken shell of a man who has fog that rolls in to protect him and he feels small and he feels weak and he's a big giant of a guy and and, um you know his development into sort of a fully self-actualized person with agency is really the best part I think that was the whole part. I mean, for me, that was the whole part. That was all of it for me was his was his journey. Yeah. But I mean, in the meantime, you've got all these. Let me just go on the record and say anybody at this institution, which it sounds like almost everyone was there voluntarily. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. Was interesting. Except for the chief and McMurphy and maybe one other dude. Yeah, the guy who likes explosions, I think, was the other dude, right? Who was not there voluntarily, who couldn't walk out whenever he wanted to. Um, So there's an awful lot of people who die there. I'm just saying, (laughs) a lot of people who died. There was just two. No, no. Okay, so there's the dude who bled to death when he cut off his scrotum. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> there is the dude who died in the pool. Right. What dude who died in the pool? I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, he, um, the guy, oh, what the hell was his name? Oh, no, I know it's showing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. And, and then yeah. I guess that was mysterious. The, uh, I don't know that they fully came out and said that that was suicide, but I think it was heavily implied that... You know, it's once McMurphy death. stopped sticking up for him and became concerned that A, he wasn't going to be released and B, he could potentially be receiving electroshock or a lobotomy um, at the will of Nurse Ratchet. And uh, I think he sort of went to the pool and didn't come out. Mm-hmm. Um, right? So that's number two. And then Billy... Yeah. Dies. Well, that's I mean, only that's three. It. Oh, and, and McMurphy. McMurphy. Right. right. So that's four. But there were 40 dudes there. That's 10%. That's yeah, not that much. But you only got to learn about <laughs> five or six. Right? I mean, it wasn't about all 40 dudes. I mean, you only got to learn about a handful of folks. That's why, proportionately, it seems like a lot of deaths. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's um, like, I can see the point. Damn it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure away. I'm fine. that the surveyors and auditors would probably not be okay with a 10% mortality rate. 
Is, is, do you think? Would I mean? I think so. <laughs> I think that would be a red flag. It's like an awful lot of dick people here. Oh yeah, I just stepped over one on my way in from the parking lot. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. so Andy, what you did read of it and what you what you know of it, would you recommend it? Yes, I would. And I would recommend it because of the style of writing and how the story is told. But I would definitely put a disclaimer out there about the things that I found and that we talked about here that are objectionable about <laughs> about the story, the, you know, the misogyny and the racism. But I think that giving that disclosure to people would be pretty important. I mean, um, to me, the racism, yeah. And like like in the Stephen King stuff, it comes up and you're surprised. But, I, I mean, I think you really could explain away um, some racist terminology or a, a epithet here and there. Um, because this was written in 1970, blue, 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 right? Whatever. I think, yeah. Right. But I mean, like in the Stephen King stuff. Right. right, right. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Our, right. Because I mean, it seemed, I think what was jolting in The Shining was that when he did come out and use the N word, um, we were like, whoa, where did that come from? Because yeah. it didn't seem in character for yeah. the, the, the main character. But, um, you know, so I, I think that I sort of compartmentalize that stuff and you sort of chalk it up. Like that even happened with the Thin Man, if yeah. you recall. Mm -hmm. um, and you just sort of chalk it up to, well, that, that was the era. It would be the same sort of thing if you were reading Huck Finn. Right, right. Or, or Tom Sawyer. Um, but the misogyny to me was like the theme of the book. Right? It was See, all about how you can't let women have dominion over you. And you have to fight to take it back. And then he had that weird, like McMurphy had that weird flashback at the place where the woman, or I guess she was a little girl, and he was. Oh a yeah, boy. that was creepy. Yeah, he was. Well. She was like what fourteen or something. That going on. No, set, no, know, it was like no. This was at the end of the book. Oh, where he was ten and she part. was nine, and oh, I was part. like, I oh, know. you got to be shitting me. I missed that part. See, yeah. for me, the misogyny, I, I, I put that on the exact same level as the racism. It, I feel like it's, first of all, it's, um, I, it, I think that it, it belongs in that era where. It, it does. And, it, it, it really does belong. And you're right. It really does belong in that era. And we're looking at it with more modern sensibilities, if you will. But. <clears throat> And well, I don't think that that that, that, that the whole thing was 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 all you know. It's all about the women keeping them down because it wasn't. It was also. But it was right. It's about Jude's wife keeping him down. It's about Billy's mother keeping him down. It's yeah. about nurse. But it was also it was also, all of them down. Yes. But it That's was also the, 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 the orderlies. It wasn't just the... Right, but they worked for her. And I mean, I get the whole, the combine imagery, right? I, I get all that. But yeah. again, that goes back to Brompton. And he, that was his, the, the way that he viewed it, right, was that everything society is this machine that chews right. people up and spits them out right and that's his but all the other characters were angry at women yes. and all but it wasn't just women that they were angry at and and i don't think that that was that i don't think that that was a huge portion of the action and discussion in the book i i, I mean i get that that nurse ratchet was she was the main chick but Again, I really yeah. feel like she was more represented, uh, more representing the system rather than an individual. Right, she, 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 they, the characters sexualized it, right? She right. represented the system. You're right. She did represent right. it, but they sexualized it. And to them, it was emasculating. Right. But don't you think that a man writing in the in the early 1960s would have had that yes. view? Yes, I. That's what I'm saying. Is is I think taking taking it as a man 
writing a book in the early 1960s who would have came of age in the 40s and 50s would have had that mindset that that what's wrong with with all of these people is they have been emasculated because of being a man being a masculine man means not having weakness not having um anybody especially a woman control you in any way so i mean i think that that's all interrelated with the with the the time of the era i agree and, and you know what we what do we call men that have that viewpoint today there's a new misogynistic a, assholes <laughs> um, no, no, no. on it's their not, way out dying. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. <laughs> right? If they go to this institution, they will die. Oh, yeah. toxic they masculinity. Toxic right, masculinity right. is what it's called now. But it's the same thing that this author, I'm sure, in the world that he he rotated in, that was pretty much it wasn't toxic masculinity then then it was just masculinity right right exactly so, right so i mean i i absolutely get what you're saying but i really think that that if we're going to put the racism into into uh, you know looking at it uh, contextually and and within the time frame i really think that we have to do the misogyny in the same way because well, i think that they're interrelated and I, I would if I didn't feel like it was the crux of the entire motherfucking book. We'll have to agree to disagree. It sounds like. It. <laughs> but we usually do on this, which is, you know, I mean, and, and that kind of shows um, that that's something that you are really focused on. Like, without a doubt, almost, I would say the vast majority of the books that we read and talk about, that is something that you bring up. And and almost guaranteed, it's something that Andy and I are like, oh, I didn't really even notice that. <laughs> well, everybody's got their hot buttons, though, right? I'm right, not saying it's interesting. It. I, well, I don't it in the least, but everybody's got their hot buttons. There's, and this, It's just I don't even really think about it. Yeah, it's just well, like, I guess I just expect it. It's like, okay, well, this is written by a dude in the 60s. It, it, women are going to be ball busters and whores. Well, I, it, so I think if it had been, you know, one guy um, who felt that way, and that was part of his, um, you know, mental issues right <laughs> right one guy hates women and he's there and 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 we learn about that um but i mean again i think that mcmurphy is brought in as as the christ figure in this book and he's the one that's telling everybody you're gonna take that shit for some bitch yeah, yeah. um you he's know and shots lower Oh, and uh, Andy, you didn't get to this, but in the very, no, and I don't say that in a shitty way. Um, <laughs> Maybe I should but, tell our listeners what the hell happened, because they're coming in this blind. Oh. Andy didn't finish the book. Well, so, there's, listen, there's more to there's it. There's a story. There's a story to the story. Well, Which let me finish telling, hold on, before I forget, because yes. I'll forget. I'll forget. <laughs> uh, so, in in the scene where McMurphy attacks nurse ratchet which happens in the book and in the in the movie right. um it's it's quite a bit different in the in the book in that he rips the front of her uniform out and one of the things that they had been brought up numerous times are her breasts mm -hmm. um uh, uh, just um as they're talking about her and and the, i mean in a shitty crass way um and her her breasts are exposed during this encounter where he is attacking her after Billy dies, and um, the way that it's described, it's um, it made me stop and just like wow, I, it was a, a way I think uh, completely taking her power away by exposing her in such a, a way and and making her become i mean it was she was completely vulnerable um this was something that she didn't ever want noticed you know her body and her femininity. it shouldn't have mattered honestly maybe like she had a couple of moments of oh shit 
and then she, you know, should put her top together and still be that ball buster. I mean, just because her tits got flashed doesn't mean she lost her power ultimately. Oh, no, but she did because that's when, so that was when he was trying to kill her. Uh, when he wrapped his hands around her throat and was choking the shit out of her and beating her ass, um, and and now in the in the film, she comes back. She's got you know like the the whiplash collar on and she has a hard time talking. Um, but in the book, most of the dudes have checked themselves out. The ones that didn't check themselves out have moved to other other uh, d- other uh, floors or depart whatever they're called wards other wards, um, so that it's only it was is it, what's I can never remember his name. That's why I keep calling him the chief. Oh, Brompton. 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 So it was him and um, the the. Uh, the character that was played by Danny DeVito in the movie. I can't remember. It started with an M. Morelli. Something I can't remember. And then one other and one other dude. And those were all the only dudes that were left uh, from the initial group. Martina. Huh? Yeah. Um, why couldn't I remember that? I don't know. I, I don't know. What the hell? Um, so, and, and when she got back, they had changed... All of the they have changed all of the ward rules without her. Um, she really lost her power. Um, she she lost all of that. She they weren't afraid of her anymore. They didn't care. And I, I wonder how much of that was supposed to have been um, triggered uh, in the in the writing about her her breasts being exposed and wow. you know her nipples and areolas or what have you uh, it, it was just there was such a focus on that exposure and her vulnerability oh, and, wow. and yeah, right after that uh, um, right after that is when they lobotomize McMurphy and yeah. um, and she comes back and and she, and I think they gave her like a week off or something after it was i think three she weeks her, she oh was it yeah i think it was three weeks because he came back and and the, and the chief kept saying you know i should leave but um i i feel like something is she's waiting she's waiting for something and um and so she when that's first ratchet yeah, Nurse Ratchet is waiting for some. So she comes back and then, or was it, maybe it was only a week. I think it was uh, a week because I was like, damn, you only get a week off after somebody beats your ass and tries to choke you to death? <laughs> she and needs then, a union. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think, um, yeah, so he said something like um, uh, she she. She, he felt like there was something that she was waiting for. She just needed to make sure. And then so McMurphy comes back down and he's, he's just gone, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's when he was like, yeah, that's what she was waiting for. She needed to make sure that she still, that she won, that he didn't win that final round. So. (laughs) yeah the the notion that once you physically assault a woman and um basically bear her uh what what most men perceive as your womanness right um you know that's and that that's how she was defeated um but it's troubling yeah. Do you remember how after she came back, one of the things that was was mentioned uh, by Brompton was that her uniform was different. It was tighter, and it showed it showed her. You know, she she couldn't hide her femininity anymore, and how he could tell that that bothered her. Because I guess we are associating femininity with weakness right so the the only way that she could be strong was to basically bind herself and and you know even when the um the patients were discussing her initially um 
R- remember they asked oh, yeah. if, he, if he could get it up for her. And McMurphy was like, I don't, I don't think so. Because, you know. That, and, that, and That really bothered That, that and, part did bother me. And they discussed the fact that she was attractive, right? She's this attractive yeah. woman. But she was a ball buster. She's middle-aged. She has apparently an immaculate rack. Um, but because she was strong and in charge and domineering, yep. uh, she was completely emasculating to them that they wouldn't even be able to get an erection. I mean, all of that stuff. So it's, I mean, maybe I am just easily triggered and you guys aren't. Fucking snowflake. (laughs) (laughs) But, um. Oh my God, so wrong. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, you know, when the, when the, the main so I mean the whole the whole thing is the the main character basically shows these men who have been beaten down by the combine and emasculated by the women in their lives that they can take control of their lives again by beating the asses of all of these women and pulling out their jugs and woohoo so but to be fair they didn't really espouse beating women it was just her and to be to be honest to be fair fair uh, he was a horrible human beat up the whore so but no they loved the whore and they made sure she got paid oh my god (laughs) but think about the context of where the story revolves it's probably the only place I can, off the top of my head, that I can think of where you would expect these super damaged people to have these crazy ass views. I mean, it was a perfect setting for the story. Which well, you would expect probably. No, I think they all have that. But, share but of these you, damaged people. But you guys I think just that those same dudes would. Would how people were then so that too that too but i'm just saying if you went down to the corner bar they would have the same the same discussions Mm -hmm. i get what you're saying (laughs) (laughs) lord have mercy this was a very lively it's kind of like that question right like if you could go back in time what era would you go to and it's you know the answer is kind of like nowhere because i mean (laughs) It feels like shit is on fire today. I cannot yeah. imagine going back 50 years, 100 yeah. years, 200 years um, to see how horrifically people are treated then. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I guess it would also depend if I go back, would I have to be the person I am now? Or, or could, could I be, be a, a, white, a white straight guy? Yeah, I mean, and, I'd like to you'd, be a... You'd also yeah. probably need to be a Christian depending on where you were. White straight guy Christian, man. That's magical yeah. in history. <laughs> and and a, a, a preferably a wealthy landowner. I would like all of right. those things. Yeah, yes. you definitely wouldn't want to be a poor guy because then, no. then you don't even get to vote. <laughs> yeah, it just, you know, they got it rough. Versus, yeah. Mm. White guys. Well, this was a very, very lively. We started out a little slow, but we got yep. going pretty well. So yep. Yep. I, I still, I'm glad that we picked this book. Yeah, um, actually, I am too. Whether you recommend it to oh anybody my God, else really or not. Seriously. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about whether you read it or not. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that would have so. been funny. <laughs> I totally no, I mean, recommend it. It is a well written book. It is. Um, if you um, don't have a soul, I recommend <laughs> oh. you don't have empathy oh or sympathy. Oh my God, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Did, you called me you, a snowflake. When, when, <laughs> I didn't. You know, when you were true. reading it, um, did you imagine Jack Nicholson? Uh, I kind of did, even though, okay, like it initially describes him as a ginger, right? Um, yeah. um, and you really kind of get, I mean, and he's got a very Irish name, right? So, uh, I mean, he, he paints a pretty vivid picture of how he looks. Yeah. But, I mean, 
the voice. And I mean, it was having seen the film before reading the book, it was hard not to picture Jack Nicholson because I mean, he, he did a really good job. He did. He did. Yeah. I did not. And I don't know if maybe it was because uh, of doing the audio book, having John C. Riley's voice in my head instead and being able to, um, to take his description along with his voice. But I felt really happy that I did not because I thought that I would. Mm-hmm. Um, because e- even some books that I read that tell me very specifically what somebody looks like, um, I will imagine them completely in a different way. And then when I come upon a description of somebody's hair or something like, oh, damn it, that's right. She's got this color hair. Uh-huh. And then I just promptly forget about that again and just keep imagining the person the way I want to. But yeah, I, I didn't. I guess maybe he looked more like a, like a roguish John C. Riley. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, and but heavily tattooed and like scarred up and stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and so Jack that's Nicholson not very any of that. That's not very John C. Riley ish either, though. No, but I mean, like his hair um, and kind of his facial features. But yeah, yeah, and um, I mean, maybe he would look. Um, who was the? Who was the redheaded dude who was in that cop show? Um, oh, I hate that guy. Oh, he's, he likes so, CSI David Monty. Caruso or whatever. David Caruso, is. right? So maybe he would look like David Caruso, hard living version. Oh, with, you just uh, like this for me. Facial scars, and I mean, you know, because. I, I I think he was meant to be sort of a working down at the docks. Mm-hmm. Irish kind of yeah like likes to get in bar fights and and apparently choke women kind of fella. I got to be honest with you if I had been in his position I would have choked her ass too. She was, I would have punched yeah. her until she couldn't fucking move. Well, so like the scene where so a lot is made about how Nurse Ratchet sits behind this glass, right, and watches the whole right. ward and the glass is immaculate and you know, the illusion is that she's just watching you unprotected. And so to make a point, McMurphy punches a hole through the glass. I mean, not in, once, but twice. But in, in a very not subtle way of saying, yeah, I can hurt you. Mm-hmm. I'm coming for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's kind of terrifying, this notion that, that the solution is um, physical violence. and. But that's what he does. He's a physically violent guy. That's why he got, that's why he continued to get to get arrested and right and that's why he he can't be the hero and his his methodology can't be what motivates these guys and he can't win and i mean in the end he doesn't win i mean good lord they lobotomize the poor guy and and then he gets killed Mm -hmm. but um but yet like that is what motivates these other guys to take control of their lives and check themselves out and be men. See how it's the whole theme of the book? Kind of, except for it wasn't like she was just this nice grandma. She oh, yeah, was she was, she was she was manipulating a, them and taking she was all a of their power. Grandma with an immaculate jugs. Yeah. <laughs> Our Lady of the Immaculate Jugs. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome if you could if you could make that into something. That would be great, like jugs of <laughs> wine. You know, <laughs> Lady of the Immaculate like Jugs. Like bring them holding. out at the same time. Yeah, <gasps> like, like yeah. holding on to the jugs of wine. Oh my God! So much fun. This Get show. More on that right away. I need a new. <laughs> I need a, 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 new, a new tankard. All right. Well, we are officially over. Yeah, time. we're over time, but it was too um, much for to stop. It was. So, uh, and I, I have a feeling we could go back and forth on this for at least another hour. Oh, um, good. But I got a drinking to do. I know. Before we go, though, I want to um, 
wish Andy a, a, a happy birthday. It's a happy little birthday. And Colette, did we miss you? I, did I miss your birthday? Um, it was no, last it's Saturday. Paper did it, calendar. Did you, did it feel like you missed it? <laughs> well, I felt like Andy had mentioned something. Yeah, about it was. Uh, it was le- a week ago today. Yeah, last oh, Saturday. Happy so, birthday. I'm pretty sure yeah. I did not wish you a happy birthday. So happy yeah. birthday. Well, I mean, because no, I, guess... I wish Laura a happy birthday. I just completely blew yours off. I think it's fine. Oh, I blame because once you once you pass twenty five, it it doesn't matter how old you are anymore anyway. Oh, no, but I still and, want my birthday marked. And when I people how old I am, <laughs> when people ask me how old I am, I have to do math. Yeah, because it's like oh, how, oh, how old am I? And then I have to do math in my head because it doesn't matter anymore. I have to agree with you on that assessment about 25 who gives a shit. Right. But the next really important date, though, is retirement. That's the next important date. Oh, uh, well, if you're to able that. to do that, I guess, if you got it good like that. I do. <laughs> right? you're going to be able to If you retire. make a livable wa- living wage, I guess that's great for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, thing, things can change in a heartbeat. You know how it rolls. What's good today might not work in a month. So who the hell knows? Right now, it's okay. Yeah. And on that note, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. And um, we'll uh, get to putting the posting the uh, actual videos and maybe even live shows down the road. But stick with us. And I hope you enjoyed the audio. And thank you, Sherry. And thank you, Colette, for joining and uh, being just as awesome as you guys are. Oh. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right. And we'll see you next month. We don't know exactly what we're reading yet. We have to fight about that. Oh, no, I'm kidding. We just have to discuss that. Um, but then, you it's know. It's like we have- fights. We get small fights. <laughs> or as, then- as our parents always said, we're not fighting. We're having a discussion. <laughs> we're right. going to discuss. <laughs> but we're going to we discuss have- why your mother is a dirty whore. Oh! Right. Oh, I'm sure fun. whatever book we pick will be jam-packed with racial epithets and misogyny. So join us here. <laughs> oh my God. And on that note, thank you all. And uh, tell your friends, subscribe on YouTube. Talk to you later. Peace out. Bye.